Hey everybody, um, in this video I wanted to show you guys, kind of briefly, um, the technique that went into making this chainmail top. So, um, grab your pliers and some rings and let's get started. <laughs> Let me show you how to weave in a basic European 4-in-1 pattern, which this is what is most commonly seen in most like medieval armors and different things. Um, the rings that I'm using here are 16 gauge 5 16 inch and um, there'll be a link down in the video description of where I sell mine but there are a lot of really good um, chainmail manufacturers uh, like who make the rings um, we're gonna start with some open and for this first row we're going to put two closed on each ring and the amount you know of uh, we call Randy and I my partner um, we call these units. So the amount of units that you set up is dependent entirely on the project that you're doing. Now whenever you get a ring, um, it'll actually be kind of just positioned like this, where it's a little offset from itself. And to open a ring, you'll use this motion to get it to come open like this. And to close it, you want to bring those ends as close together as what you can so that there's no room for your skin or hair or anything to get snagged and um, it's a nice smooth closed ring. So I'm going to start by taking one ring with two closed on it and I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to butterfly these rings so that they're positioned like this. You don't want them positioned like that, that's incorrect. You want them kind of mirror image of each other. And then you can see how this ring is kind of coming in from the bottom here, over the top, and then down like that. I'm going to pick up another ring, and we're going to mimic that same pattern. And then I'm going to close it. And now you can see here, this one went immediately into just hanging like that, but still holding on to this ring with my pliers. I'm just going to push up on that ring and get those side rings butterflied out like this. And then if you don't want to have the closed rings on there, you can just take an open ring, thread it through following in that same pattern because you don't want to come in like this because it'll just pull your rings. You need it coming through in that same direction of the weave as the ones before it. And then you can put your two closed rings on and close it. And also, if it makes you comfortable, you can work with it just there on your work surface and pick up your rings and kind of I'm sliding in from below and coming in from above and I'm going to close it. I've seen folks use cork boards and pins to pin this ring down. I've seen them attach um, a, a brightly colored paper clip um, there are a lot of different options for stabilizing that ring. Do whatever you feel like it takes to keep that where um, you can keep everything straight. So I've just hooked through those two again. And I'm going to close it. And now let's see even what it would look like from the other side. So again here, I've just flipped it over. So I'm going to want to follow in this way. And you just want to make sure that you're emulating the way that the ring before it is laying. I really hope that makes sense. <laughs> and if it's not laying right, just tap it around a bit until you start to figure it out. There we go. And there's that. And so what we would do is you would continue making this until you have the length that you want. Um, like if you're making a shirt, I would recommend doing this to the full length of across the fullest part of the uh, chest. 
and the broadest part of the shoulders. Um, and I want to show you guys the project that I'm working on, which is, um, it's a little, little bigger of a project. Um, you can kind of see here, it's just a lot of chain mail. And so it has a very repetitious pattern. You know, so you can see we've got some rings that are laying that way and some rings that are laying this way. I really like the movement and drape and just tactile fun of chainmail. Like it's a well woven chainmail feels so good. Like you can slide your hands over it and it's silky. There's no burrs or snags or anything. And the way that I've been doing this one, you can see it actually has a taper. You can see more clearly on the other end. See how it tapers down? And I'm doing this kind of on the other side, but it tapers up to a point, and then tape starts tapering back down. And I'm actually just going to be adding one more row onto this piece, and um, to expand off of, and we would be doing this even if we had just our original piece, we would take it and we would start expanding off the sides. What I would do is I would add one more ring onto this end here. Just like that. See how that kind of makes it even? And then I would do one open with one closed on each of them. I'll show you on this one, but that same concept would be happening on here. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this next row is going to be 16. Let me get 16 rings set up. I really do find that it helps to do a little bit of prep like this. Because it makes going through and weaving just that much faster. And I'm going to go through with Randy, my partner, has gone through and already closed a bunch of rings for me. So I'm just going to do one on each and every, except for the last one. And this is going to let us get that tapered effect row by row. toss those back in the bin. And now I'm just going to pick up one with one on it and I'm going to hook through those two and I'm going to close it. And you can see here this needs kind of butterflied open to lay like that so that it mirrors, mirrors that ring. I'm going to pick up another, thread through from below come in from above through one, two, and close. And again, just kind of tap and fiddle those rings around until they lay where they're supposed to go. The more you do it, the more you'll, the better you'll get at um, pattern recognition, and you'll be able to spot um, where the rings are supposed to go. And they'll also develop a tendency to just kind of fall into place, too. Though that could just be... Um, I've, been, I've been weaving chainmail for nine years, so um, I don't know how much of this is just out of habit and muscle memory. But um, if you guys have any questions or want to see from different angles... Um, which, speaking of different angles, let me turn this over. I have a tendency to weave away from myself. But if you want to weave towards yourself... You can just flip it over. Oh, what crap. 
<laughs> Excuse me. I also just chronically make messes, so fortunately that didn't scatter everything too badly. So I'm going to, from this angle, I would weave through one, two, and then I'm coming around from underneath and up through that third ring, and then I'm going to close it. I love that click, it lets me know I'm doing good. I'm going to lay this ring back over so that it's butterflied and laying in the correct position. And then I'm going to go in again through one and two and then up from below. Now this is called the European foreign one, European, because it's this style of chainmail that lays flat and has a grain to it. And then inside each one completed ring, in, like inside this one, there's one, two, three, four other rings. You could also do a European 6 in 1, 8 in 1, 10 in 1, 12 in 1. Um, just it would get denser and denser the more rings that you fit inside of it. And so that that's what the name means. Um, there's a lot of other uh, traditional names for this weave of chainmail, um, but I feel like the European 4 in 1 is the, the most, it's the one I run into the most um, when talking to other chainmailers. Um, and it's a very technical term, and sometimes just boiling it down to the technical term is an easy way, you know, to, um, to communicate the concept, I think. So I'm just going to continue kind of weaving this. I love these bent nose pliers specifically for getting the, uh, the rings kind of in there. and not having to keep my hands at like funny angles, but don't hesitate to experiment with different plier types as well as hand positions. And we can also flip this back over and weave this way if you want to look at it from this angle. So we're going to pick up another ring and we're going to hook through one and then one, two, and then close. Fortunately, we're just repeating that same open ring becomes a closed ring. Um, so once you start to get the hang of that, um, everything else becomes so much easier. So if you're starting out, I do recommend, like if this is one of your first projects, um, pay close attention to your ring uh, closures because now is the time to build good habits for later on. And as we're coming up on our last couple of rings, um, you want to make sure that that's laying properly. Then one, two. And you can see the last rings here are always kinds of floppy and don't want to behave. So I'm going to open that one up. And then this one actually needs to come around just underneath. There we go. And now with this last one, you can see it's just one, one, two, three rings. So I'm just going to hook this one open through those three and then close it. And you can see how that gradiated down even further. So now I'm going to pan out and let's look at what the big completed project is going to look like. What we have here is a naked mannequin and our chain mail. Um, so right now I'm gonna have a really hard time kind of holding it up and demonstrating how it's going to be sitting on the mannequin. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is here you can see where it tapers up to the points on the sides. I'm going to be attaching these welded one inch steel rings. Um, and the way I'm going to be doing that oops, is um, where this one threaded through those two, I'm going to be threading that large steel ring through those two and then doubling up on those rings. Um, this is not a structural piece, so it is not complete, like, it's not really intended to um, be bearing a lot of weight, and it's, um, it, it, I guess what I'm getting at is if, if you want this for armor or for like some serious like LARPing purposes, maybe go up from an 18 gauge to a 14 gauge um, and maybe go from an aluminum to a stainless steel. 
Um, just because, I mean, you're going to run into split and opened rings um, at some point, which is why we do free repairs on all of our work. But you can kind of see just how that sits in there. There's from one side and there's from the other. And now I'm going to go through to the other side and do that same thing. So you can see here, I'm just removing, I should have done this while it was still on the table, but I'm just removing that one ring. And now I'm going to go and open this one and hook on the steel ring. And I believe I got these either at like Lowe's or Tandy Leather or possibly even Hobby Lobby, like over in their like leather working section. And then I'm going to open this one. And then you just want the the taper, like the, the lay of this ring to lay in line with the other ones in that row. Even though it's a different size, you still want to keep that, that kind of grain. So there is that one done up on both sides. And now you can see on the bottom hem, we have it going, coming to a complete point, but here on the top, it's just a straight flat edge. And that way on a person, it would like, the proportions would be right. Um, and I'm going to be tying it off with a spool of ribbon that I lost. There it is. Staring right at it. Um, this is 5 eighths inch, 18 feet polyester ribbon in a really nice kind of like mocha brown color. I got this, I think, at, um, either Walmart or Hobby Lobby. I really like going to Hobby Lobby whenever they have their 50% off tool and ribbon spools. Now I'm not going to need all 18 feet of this. If I could find my scissors. Why do I just like this? I don't even know. Here we go. I've got some scissors. Um, I'm going to cut off the tape ends at a nice angle and you know I think I am going to use the whole 18 feet because I can always trim it back later but I'm going to use the folded end here and just kind of I think I'm going to use this crochet hook, which is a size G or 6 or 4.25 millimeter uh, crochet hook, and I'm just going to hook that like this. And on the top edge, I'm just going to thread through these rings with the crochet hook. You can kind of see it like a like a shower curtain onto a curtain rod just hooking on each of the rings just like this and once I've gotten through all of them I'm gonna make sure my ribbon is nice and hooked and I'm just going to pull through all of them and I'm gonna bring that through to its halfway point and again I'm going to cut it at an angle. Doing it at an angle keeps the uh, the fibers of the ribbon from just fraying. Okay, so now here, the way that we're going to be tying this, let me get all the hair off of it, is it is going to come in the front, and then in the back, it's actually going to be crossing. There could, there's surely an easy way of going about this. Um, okay, so we have it in the front and it's coming off that this is one shoulder and this is the other. I'm going to cross it in the back. This shoulder will be traveling through the ring on this side, just like this. And then this shoulder will be coming through to the ring on the other side, just like this. And then it will be tying in a bow in the center. Mm -hmm. 
Now this is just how we do some of our chainmail pieces for in the booth that are intended to be accessorized with other armor pieces or over other clothing. But whenever I'm doing something custom for a person, I typically make it fully to their dimensions. That way um, they have coverage where and how they want it. But this way you can have that nice halter top shaping and effect without it pulling down on the back of your neck. And it also lets you layer other necklaces with it. But um, I think this really demonstrates the nice kind of shape to it. It has a very nice drape, a really nice kind of like flow and effect. I just, I love the shiny chain mail. And like, I, oh, oh, it feels so good to like pet it. It's all silky. And I haven't even tumbled this one yet. And um, you could accessorize out and use all sorts of different kinds of ribbon colors, but the belt that I intend to make with this one is going to tie with the same brown ribbon, so it kind of helps accessorize it. But yeah, so if y'all enjoyed this tutorial um, and found it helpful in any way or form, um, I'd love to uh, hear from you if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, or if you want to like just thumbs up it or share it with your friends. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> this was pretty time consuming. It took Randy, Randy prepped a lot of the rings for me. Um, and we've probably been working on this for like, what would you say, three days on this piece? Two or three. Two or three days on this piece. Now granted, we've had some other stuff going on, so it hasn't been nonstop work, but we feel pretty good about having gotten it finished. Um... I can't wait to see it on somebody. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought though. But yeah, if you have any questions, comments, leave them down in the comment area below. Um, my website and my Facebook links will be down in the comment area so you can contact me that way if you want to share pictures of what you have made. Um, also, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to participate in my monthly, well bi-monthly, um, fairy house giveaway, uh, you can visit our Patreon, which there's links, again, down in the video description, um, to where you can go do that. For just a dollar, it puts your name in the hat to um, win one of our hand-sculpted fairy houses or homes for the gnomeless. Um, our most recent piece, which we'll actually be shipping out tomorrow, is this one here. It's a really cool um, sketchbook journal cover uh, that I had sculpted. And... Um, so if you pledge a dollar, it puts your name in the hat once. If you pledge five dollars, it puts your name in the hat five times. So it greatly increases your chances of winning. And um, all of the proceeds of that go towards providing tools and materials for the uh, panels and workshops that I teach at conventions, as well as helping produce more free tutorials for y'all to view and enjoy. So um, thank you again so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and uh, happy crafting. I'll see y'all around. Bye. <laughs>